Hello again, and in this last uh, section of this um, on this video about uh, triggering, we're going to look at switch bounces. It's very, very quick. Um, so what we first have is a the following circuit. So we've got a five volt supply going through a switch uh, to a pull down resistor, and we've got our scope connected to uh, across the resistor effectively. Um, so we can monitor what's happening and look at it from a bounce perspective. So let's see that in reality. And uh, here's the circuit. So here's my five volt supply going in. This is my 10K resistor. This is my switch that I've just uh, wired up. And I've got my scope probe uh, effectively across the 10K resistor like that. So let's go back uh, to our uh, presentation. And now what I'm gonna do here is this is just an example. I've been playing with this, um, just seeing what's going on. And so I've set my trigger, you can see here, let's go to the trigger mode. Um, so I put it onto normal so that I can uh, catch any edge that's actually uh, active, although this is set primarily for a rising edge, but I'll explain why it might pick up different edges than that uh, in a minute. Um, it's set to 2.5 volts, which is half the voltage of our supply going in. And I've got the pre-trigger at 50%, so we can see pre and post what's going on. Um, and obviously we're on uh, channel A because channel B is off. We've only got one channel working on this. So let me uh, now go to the time base. Time base is quite critical here because we're trying to look at this in a bit more detail. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna put it into uh, milliseconds and I am just going to uh, switch the switch on and off. Now, because we're in normal mode, um, I can just press away on the switch and uh, see what happens, okay? And here you can see uh, the sw switch triggering. Now. Obviously, there's a lot going on. You can see an edge, but there's a lot of noise on there. And because I've got such a tiny uh, a, a one millisecond time base, it'd be very interesting to see this in a bit more detail from a faster perspective. So let's put this onto 100, uh, mic uh, 100 microseconds per division, and uh, let's see what's happening. And there's a beautiful example of a switch bounce. This is actually it's being switched on and actually uh, then uh, switching off. And this is why uh, when you are designing microcontroller systems and you've got switches attached to them, and if you're using interrupts on these switches, it can cause havoc because every single edge you detect here might be detected by the microcontroller and therefore it goes off and performs multiple tasks of ultimately the same thing. Um, and this is why switches have um, a parameter called the debounce time so that you can actually uh, design either your analog electronics or in modern terms, really uh, software to actually detect the starting edge of a switch action and then immediately um, uh, put on timers inside your microcontroller to decide when you actually want to then really sample the signal to find out if it is a real um, switch press and have you got overall of the debounce uh, period of the switch. It is an absolutely fascinating area um, associated with embedded systems. So I'm just going to keep on pressing that. You can see here there's a lot of noise going on in there. Um, so, you know, it's just phenomenal how noisy they actually are. So this is just giving you a good idea of what's going on in order for you to be able to use triggering to analyze um, things as simple as switches in a lot of detail. So I just wanted to very, very quickly show you that um, uh, just to demonstrate that, you know, because this is an all random noise on the right hand side. Uh, it picks up the very first event, but then after that, it can be absolutely anything because of the bounce nature of switches. So um, I hope all of that has made sense. Um, so really what I want to do is actually um, yes, you can set up the whole system using auto, but there are so many cases where it's not relevant and it actually will misguide you and mislead you. And so what I would suggest to you that um, always try and learn triggering and try not to use the auto setups because it, you're in charge of your equipment then, which is so important. So if you're in doubt, if you're starting, uh, you know, this is really a guide to setting up triggering. If you're in doubt about what to do, then start with your scope in uh, in the... Uh, with uh, trigger mode set to none, because it means you will see anything that's going on uh, from a signal perspective, okay? Um, so once you've done that and you've got something happening on your scope, then look at the vertical scale and see if you can actually sort of like uh, maximize the signal within the window of your scope, okay? And then when you've done that, look at the time base. And now remember, this, is be, this will be totally, um, depends what the nature of the signal is, however, you can actually also adjust the time base a bit to actually see if you can visually sort of capture um, uh, something 
in a particular uh, time frame. Um, so once you've got the vertical scale and the time base uh, set up, remember there's no lock on this at this point when you're in none. So um, uh, so there'll be it'll be totally unsynced and it'll be all over the place. It'll be quite random, but this is like the starting point. Now, once you've done that, then what you want to do is maybe examine that signal and determine its mean value and set the trigger threshold voltage to that value. And in general, um, you can set digital signal thresholds to one volt here from a, dig um, from a uh, digital system perspective. Uh, if it's, for example, even a five volt or a 3.3 volt system, one volt will work. And that's possibly why Figatech have actually defaulted the threshold to one volt, which makes sense. If you're on an alternating signal, um, that's going around zero, then set the, set the signal threshold to zero um, because it does make sense to do that. And then at least you stand a chance of capturing everything. Now, when you've done all of this, consider whether you want the trigger to be on a positive transition or a negative transition. And this will be relevant um, if you're looking at uh, data capture in protocols and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so just set your trigger direction accordingly. And then once you've done all of that, then you look at the mode. So how do you want to catch the signal? So if you're in doubt, then use auto. Um, if you know what you're doing and feel confident with triggering features, then use norm. Um, and if you want to examine a signal in great detail, then use single. Um, now, remember in the demonstrations we're doing uh, in these videos, then because I was in charge of the transmission of the signal, uh, then of course, uh, single, um, uh, normal works very well. However, um, sometimes if you've got uh, multiple signals coming out and you just want to catch one part of that, then single shot is by far the best way to do it. And don't forget to arm the trigger. So, because once it's taken a shot, it won't rearm itself. You have to rearm it, okay? And so look at the top left-hand side of your screen, uh, e.g. the running or stopped uh, situation. If it says stop, then press it again to get it running to catch another signal, because otherwise you think it's uh, not working properly, um, but in fact it is just waiting for you to arm, this, uh, arm the, um, the trigger uh, mechanism. And then uh, finally, if you change from single mode to any other mode, then remember to rearm the trigger. Okay, and that's pretty much all I've got to say about triggering. And um, there are more advanced modes, but that wasn't really part of this um, uh, this presentation. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's been probably quite a long journey, but I hope you've also learned something in the process. Okay, bye.